So with my most ambitious video to date finally sorted, I think I'll stick to making smaller videos just so I can no longer keep you guys in the dark of what I'm making. But I am curious, whether you like these smaller, hopefully weekly videos, or these larger essay type vids, let me know in the comments just so I could find out your preferences. Now, I am quite a huge fan of Pokemon, as you can no doubt tell, though I have to say I am pretty much limited to the main series of games, as well as a good chunk of the anime, which I plan to go back into someday, particularly with the Diamond and Pearl and X and Y arc, since I've heard such good stuff about them. So my proper introduction to the franchise as a whole was between the end of Generation 3 and the beginning of Generation 4, though I never actually got serious into playing them until they transcended into the third dimension with Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. And may I also mention that it kind of struck me by surprise that this is the highest grossing multimedia franchise of all time, being the likes of Hello Kitty, Star Wars, and even Disney of all things. But before I get into talking about one of the only generations I had little to no experiences with, and because it seems very unlikely that I'm going to be making full videos on the first two games, I figured I should probably give my thoughts on Generations 1 and 2 now. So first off, I should address that when I played the first two games, I played them for their remake versions, that being Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Heart Gold. And yes, despite these games coming out with two versions, I always pick the first out of the two because I feel as if the first one technically classifies as being canon. Even though I don't primarily play these games for the story, that's just how I roll to be honest. Well anyway, Pokemon Fire Red was essentially an updated and fixed up version, as the originals were kind of bugged up and didn't have the necessary newer features, like the Steel and Dark types and whatnot, leaving me with having a pretty solid introduction to the series, as well as sporting a team that I honestly did not expect I would have. And as for Hard Gold, it was also for the most part a great experience, as with every new instalment, I like to experiment with only newly discovered Pokemon when it comes to catching and battling. Though I have to mention one of the biggest drawbacks was the random spikes in difficulty curve, something in relation that I'll discuss into a little later. But now with the third generation of Pokemon games, which a lot of older fans was their stopping point before coming back a few generations later, which I guess I can understand after being burnt out from the last two, but also when you really look at it, Ruby and Sapphire wasn't exactly as revolutionary compared to Gold and Silver, but that still doesn't deny the fact that I had just as much fun with this installment as with the last two. Like other games in the series, you're given a brief introduction to the world of Pokemon from the region's professor. In this case, it's the Hoenn region and Professor Birch, in which you also give an introduction to your gender and name. Afterwards, we find out that you're actually moving into the region, even though I don't know why you prefer to travel in the back of a moving van instead of being in the passenger seat, but whatever. You then meet up with your mum in Lilbrook Town, and after finding out that your dad is actually a gym leader in this region, you meet up with one of your rivals, in this case it's your opposite gender character, as well as Professor Birch who is being chased by a wild Pokemon. It's at this point you choose one of the starter Pokemon in this region, as for me, I chose Trico, and after saving the Professor, he allows you to keep that Pokemon and tasks you to meet up with your rival, who is actually his kid. After meeting up with your rival and having your first trainer battle, the both of you head back to the professor's lab where he gives you a Pokedex and tasks you to go out and catch Pokemon as well as battle the gym leaders so you can enter the Pokemon League. Same old, same old. You also come across various other characters who also have their own traits and quirks that generally start up as interesting build-ups, but they don't really go anywhere to explore deeply, most likely because of the overall nature of the series is intended for younger audiences. Still, one of your other rivals named Wally had a pretty interesting premise since it's hinted that he has a certain health condition that relates to him living under the varied landscape of Hoenn, and also like I said, you have a father in which you battle later as a gym leader and getting him to see your potential of your skill in Pokemon battling was something. As for the rest of my adventure, journeying across Hoenn was particularly interesting since, as I said, I knew next to nothing about this region and so Exploring new territory and the unique, inspired geography was kind of fascinating. Whether it was scaling rocky roots that also sported falling ash, going for that one desert-like area which had these somewhat annoying sandstorms, to of course surfing over the crap ton of water in which has become a factor of Hoenn, which for the most part didn't really affect me that bad. 
Assuming you had enough repels, since some of the wild sea creatures did give me a bit of a bad time. Which in relation is probably a good time to talk about what is one of my major issues with some of these earlier Pokemon games, is that the way I generally like to play most RPGs, I like to move at a steady pace, which unfortunately leaves me being quite underleveled to some gym leaders, because I am not a fan of grinding to get to higher levels. Yet I still find myself going across selected routes in order to make my Pokemon somewhat capable to earn those badges. This is why so far from my experiences, the 3DS games have had the perfect balance as to how the EXP share works, you can essentially choose the difficulty of your journey, not like Sword and Shield in which all your party members get experience with absolutely no way of turning it off. Another downfall with this instalment, however, revolves around exploring new areas and HMs. So, I've heard from a lot of fans saying how they don't like HMs or hidden machines to travel further in these games. Well, honestly, I never really had an issue with them, as I always made sure that my Pokemon knew at least one hidden move each, not just for travelling purposes, but a lot of them have actually proven to be quite useful in battle. However, with Ruby and Sapphire, it seems as though the number of Pokemon that can learn selected moves is quite scarce, as before getting my last badge, which required using the HM Dive in order to access the city, my current water type at the time, Palapa, couldn't learn that move, and it pissed me off, as I didn't want to switch out for a new Pokemon just to be my HM slave, but also there was no way to level up quickly enough, and thus I had to restart my game with a new planned out team. Despite that annoyance though, the final team I did put together was actually quite splendid. As I said before, I had Trico, which of course evolved into Sceptile, but I was also fortunate enough to find out that I could get a Waltz quite early on, which became Gardevoir, and for the longest time was my strongest member during the final act, mostly thanks to her pretty varied moveset that included Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt. Next, I got a Makurita and quickly got it to become Hariyama, who helped tremendously in the third gym and was practically a tank throughout most of my journey. Later on, I got a Nummel, who I got to become Camerupt. He didn't have many fire attacks and was quite slow as shit, but he made up for it tremendously with the amount of power in his ground type attacks. It was at this point that I needed to resort the final two slots for my team, which required a flying type and a water type. The final decision resolved around me getting a Swablu, which after much patience finally became a Altria. So it was quite nice to have a Dragon type on my team. And finally, my new water type became a Carvenar, which evolved into Sharpedo, because who wouldn't want a goddamn shark on their team? And not to mention, it was incredibly fast and could learn ice type attacks, which practically saved my ass during the Elite Four. It's also worth mentioning that the two new villainous teams, Team Magma and Team Aqua, are quite the step up from Team Rocket from the last two games. No longer essentially the Mafia, both teams want to alter the landscape of Hoenn and possibly the whole world, with Team Magma wanting to increase the amount of land, whilst Team Aqua wants to decrease and add more water. Which sounds like pretty serious shit if you ask me. It's also fascinating how, depending on what version you play, the other team will actually assist you in taking down their counterparts, except for Pokemon Emerald in which you face off against both teams and includes an extra confrontation with the legendary Pokemon Rayquaza, which sort of makes me wish that I played that version instead for the bigger story, but that's just how it is, I guess. Aside from that, several other new features were introduced in this generation, including weather being visible on the field and can transfer into battle, Pokemon tournaments in which they rate your Pokemon based off a certain condition, which I did try like two or three times, but I couldn't get into it because I guess it required a bit more time to get right. And of course, double battles, in which you let two of your Pokemon battle against another Pokemon duo, and requires you to think a bit more strategically, as type advantage could go in either direction, and not to mention some moves could actually hurt multiple Pokemon at once including your own. If there's one way of describing this game's presentation is that it's a lot more, pardon the pun here, more advanced as it sports a lot more detail, has a wider variety of colours and of course the battle sequences have like actual backgrounds now instead of just being a white void. Also thanks to the Game Boy Advance's processing speed, everything from basic movements to battle animations are a lot more smoother and faster. Probably the fastest I've experienced so far 
And so whenever I inevitably have to grind or get through battles quickly, it's good to know that they won't be too much of a drag and so I could proceed with my journey much sooner. The same kind of praise can be given to the game's soundtrack, which is some pretty good stuff. Though, this could be from the lack of repeated listening, but when it comes to the actual composition of some of these tracks, I honestly think that the previous two games had some more memorable music, and not to mention, this generation is pretty notorious for having the now most famous Hoenn trumpets. Oh, one last thing I want to mention, which is my last gripe with this game, is that Due to my need to finding and collecting as many items as possible, my general items inventory eventually became too full quite frequently, thus leaving me having to either sell them off or toss them when exploring. The reason I bring this up is that when I was playing Fire Red, I didn't have the same issue despite it being in the same generation. Maybe they fixed it by that point, but I'm just glad that I no longer had to worry about tossing out items in exchange for something potentially worse. All in all, my first time journeying into the Hoenn region was a pretty solid trip. Even though it was more evident at this point that newer Pokemon games after this would be relatively similar with only a few added features, that still doesn't deny the distinctive and unique setting that the Hoenn region brought to many Pokemon fans in which have become either their first or favourite instalment in the series. Once again, the quite annoying need to grind and occasional difficult obstacles puts it pretty hard to encourage younger fans of the series, but thankfully I think that can be resorted with the remakes for the 3DS. I just hope whenever I get around to playing the next instalment, that being Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, even though that's probably not going to happen for another few months later, I hope that I won't have to suffer through the HM problem and also maybe ask for a more compelling story that will be able to keep my attention alongside the fun gameplay. With that being said, I'm going to give Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire a 7 out of 10. Thank you guys for checking out my discussion of the latest stop in my little Pokemon retrospective that I'm travelling down. And so whenever I do end up in the Sinnoh region next, I'll be sure to follow up and hopefully have an experience that is just as good if not better in the Pokemon series. Which speaking of which, I'm curious, what is your favourite Pokemon or region that you've been to? Whatever it is, be sure to leave in the comments below for me to check out. If you enjoyed what I had to say, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date to my newest releases and discussions. And if you want to check out some of my other videos, click the link that's on screen right now. But until we meet again, thank you once more for watching, stay safe and clean out there, and this is Callum Jones, signing out.